Today, you're going to learn 13 tools and techniques that will make your logo design experience with Illustrator a million times easier. And in the next seven minutes, you're going to learn which tools to use, how they work, and most importantly, how to combine them together. And the logo we'll be making, well, it may look familiar. So first things first, we need some text. So let's grab the type tool, click anywhere, and in lowercase type Amazon. And I've managed to find an almost identical font, and that is Officina Sans Standard Bold. Now let's centrally align this text. And of course, we're going to need to make this much, much bigger. So let's scale it up holding shift. And as you can imagine, we're going to put this in the center. And now number one, pen tooling paths. So let's grab the pen tool and then I can click and then click and drag to create this smiley thing under here. And you can see it adds a fill to this shape. Let's swap that to a stroke. There we go, much better. And it wants to continue that path, but you can press escape to cancel that. Okay, stroke cap type. So with our newly drawn smiley thing selected, first let's thicken up that stroke weight. And then from the stroke panel, we can change the cap type to round. And you can see it nicely rounds off those square edges. Right, next back to the pen tool, but first we need to deselect everything. So press command or control shift A. And again, we can draw another curve, this time a bit smaller. And with this selected, hold down alter option and shift and drag to the right and it will create a duplicate. But we need this facing the other way. So let's take a look at flipping objects. So simply click either of these two icons at the top here to flip the object horizontally or vertically. Right, next up, outline mode. Simply press Command or Control Y to go into outline mode and we get a styleless wireframe and we can easily drag these two points together. And now we need to look at joining the paths. So let's switch to the direct selection tool and then drag over these top two end anchor points, go to object, down to path, and select join. And these two separate curves are now one single path. Okay, rounding corners. Again, using the direct selection tool, we can click on this corner widget and then click and drag to easily adjust the corner radius. A nice quick way to add curves and we can now position this on the end of the smile line thing. I mean, it is a smile. I don't know why I just didn't say that. Anyway, that's looking nicely positioned, but now we need to adjust the stroke width. And we can do this with the good old width tool. And you can use this to click on any point on any path, click and drag, and you can make that part of the path thicker or thinner. So you can see I've chunked up the middle and I'm thinning down those ends. We can do the same for the pointy arrow smile crease thing at the end as well. And the shortcut for this tool is shift W. So let's reduce the width of either end and then thicken up that middle section. And there we go, thick. Now let's take a look at expanding appearances. So with our new thick shape selected, go to object and select expand appearance. And this will convert that stroke to a shape with a solid fill. But there's a problem. If we zoom in nice and close, we need to fix that somewhat right angled corner, which leads me on to redrawing bad paths. So let's go ahead and grab the pencil tool. You can find this under the shaper tool. And by default with this tool, I can click and drag along the selected path to completely redraw it. But if it's not working, double click the pencil tool in the toolbar and turn on the option to edit selected paths. And whilst this feature is cool, as you can see, it's uh, not really working, which I guess leads me on to smoothing out badly redrawn paths. So let's click and hold on the pencil tool and underneath you'll find the smooth tool. And we can use this little gem to click and drag over an existing path to try and smooth out any kinks, which in this case worked out nicely. Now for this next bit, let's ungroup all of the letters and make sure we can move them around individually. There we go. Yep. All good. And now I'm going to need to zoom in nice and close on the letter Z or Z if you live across the pond. And now let's take a look at custom Customizing letters. So first up, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. And I'm going to draw an ellipse down here, something like this. And I'm going to use this ellipse to curve the bottom part of the Z or Z. Now from the bottom of the toolbar, let's swap that fill to a stroke and we'll change that color to something nice and bright, say a uh, red. And the top of this ellipse marks where that curve is going to be. So let's take a second to adjust that size and position. And then I'm going to hold alter option and shift and drag up to create a duplicate. There we go. And basically I'm going to remove the bottom of this letter and use these two ellipses to add my own bottom section that is curved. Once they're in position, select both of them and then swap that stroke to a fill. Now I'm going to select the letter as well and go and select the shape builder tool, which is this fella here. Once again, let's go back into outline mode. And if we hold down alter option with this tool, we can click and drag through multiple shapes and remove these segments. And conversely, if you let go of alter option, you can click and drag through segments to combine them together. Again, let's grab the direct selection tool and I can select these few points here and use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move them around. Or you can drag with the mouse, whichever is easier. And what I'm doing is just thickening up this bottom part of the letter because I cut it a bit thin, kind of like myself. Not really, I'm technically overweight, sad times. Anyway, you can see me here using the smooth tool again to try and fix this problem. But in this case, it just ain't working. And when the drawing tools fail, there's something else we can rely on. First, let's use 
use direct select to completely remove this segment. So three anchor points gone and we now have a nice big gap. But pen tool to the rescue, we can click on one anchor point and connect this together with a nice smooth curve. So one down, one to go. However, this one here, well, the edge is completely squared off, which neatly brings me on to cutting paths. And to do this, have a look under the knife tool and you will find the scissors tool. And we can use this to make cuts along a path. So let's add one there and there. And now we've made those cuts, we can use the direct selection tool to completely remove that bottom corner. So we're basically doing what we did before, but we had to use that tool first to make the cuts before we could then edit that bottom corner. And it's probably worth checking that this doesn't look terrible. Nope, all good, phew. Now let's select the red letter and use the eyedropper tool to sample that same black color. And last but not least, we're going to look at warping objects. So first of all, let's select both parts of the smiley arrow thing and then go up to object and all the way down to envelope distort and select make with warp. And there's a ton of options here you can have fun playing around with. Let's just pop that over there. And then from the drop down, I can change the style. So let's go with arch. And you can see in this quick example, I can use this to bend that smile even more. Right, let's click OK and we're done. And if you enjoyed that and would like more logo design goodness, uh, I've got a video here that I, what the? F <laughs>